lunch? Lori suggested. We could contact different venues to see if they would consider donating space. If they hear about the ministry, they might be open to that, and then we wouldn't have to worry about the weather. Possibly someone might be willing to cut us a deal on catering, added Kathy, a retired psychologist and friend of Lori's. Ben, a friend and work colleague of Mike's, stood up from the love seat to stretch. It would be nice to have photographs of the horses and ranch, to show the people who come, to give them an idea of what you all do. Ideas, suggestions, and possibilities were tossed around for the next twenty minutes. With each one, Kim's fear and frustration built until her head began to throb. Finally, Alan called for the meeting to be adjourned. But I encourage each one of you to pray during the week for wisdom about this matter. See you next week. Kim certainly prayed. In fact, she felt as though she prayed for little else that week. She researched fundraising ideas, discussed various ideas and thoughts with friends not associated with the ranch, and made countless lists of possibilities. Nothing like a list to bring order to chaos. But there was no order to be found. Each place she called was sympathetic to her situation and inspired by the ministry, but they were all either booked solid through the holidays or unable to lower the prices. It was mid-November, and she was competing with company events that had been planned at least a year before. And even if a venue opened up, would anyone want to donate so close to Christmas? The odds were not looking good. With the follow-up board meeting scheduled the next evening, Kim sat in the Hope Rain's office, looking at a sheet of paper in front of her. It was the list of possible venues, every one with a line through it. Lord, why are you being so silent? Why would you bring us this far, only to let us lose it all? Kim prayed her lament out loud. The ranch was quiet, now that the last volunteers had left. Kim tossed her pen on the table and got up. Time to walk. The sun seemed to be setting rapidly. The time change meant there were no more evening sessions until the spring. They couldn't conduct sessions in the dark. Grateful for the warmer-than-usual weather, Kim headed straight for Paddock, too, without even thinking. Joey had that effect on people, drawing them like a magnet. A moment later, she was beside the handsome black-and-white horse, who was standing near the hay box. "'Hey, Joey!' Kim announced her presence, certain that the intuitive horse already knew she was there. She rubbed her hand along his side, lingering on several of his spots. "'How are you, baby?' she asked, a lump rising in her throat at the thought of what would happen to the blind horse if they couldn't figure out a way to raise the needed funds. She looked across the paddock to Speckles. He was just starting to make real progress. What would happen to him? Who would want to care for him? Each of the Hope Rain's horses was her responsibility. As her anxiety began to rise, Kim forced herself to breathe in through her nose and out through her mouth. Her fingers began to tingle. Slow down and sit down. But where? A late afternoon drizzle had left the ground muddy between the piles of manure. Back to the office? Just the thought of it made her heart rate quicken. And then it dawned on her. Joey and Speckle's hay box. She climbed in, sat cross-legged, and closed her eyes. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Suddenly, a large nose pushed against her cheek. Oh! She opened her eyes and stared at Joey, who was intent on finding out what large, delicious treat was in his feed box. Sorry, boy. Kim apologized, reaching out to stroke his chin. Hope you don't mind. She gave the curious horse a handful of hay, which he eagerly took. She absently stroked his upper leg as he chewed. What is going to happen to you if I can't figure this out? What's going to happen to all of you? To the kids? To this place? A tear made its way down her cheek. You are doing so well here, Joey. You connected with Ethan and little Allie. You've been a friend to Speckles, and she turned to look at him.
You've provided such comfort to me.